What subjects does the Bible cover that you feel are seriously flawed? Well, it depends on the degree of the flaw, doesn't it? I feel the Bible is seriously flawed in its discussion of God. It, it really terribly uh, portrays God. It, it portrays God almost like a megalomaniac person on earth, uh, a person who is a dictator. And God's not like this at all. So I feel that's its primary flaw. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is if you believe in a God like that, you finish up becoming like that yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good thing either. Um, whatever you believe in, you finish up often becoming. And so, you know, it's if you believe in a God who's a dictator and a megalomaniac who wants power and wants the worship of everybody, God's not like that. And if you believe in a God like that, then eventually you start enforcing that kind of a God's opinions. And the problem with that is that, this, you know, that's why there's been a lot of Christian based wars on this planet as a result of those particular opinions. Also, what the Bible says about the human soul isn't accurate at all. Um, there are some parts of it that are accurate uh, when it comes to the human soul, but a lot of it is not accurate. There, uh, what the Bible states about, you know, what is behavior, proper behavior between people, some of that is accurate and some of it is not. Mm -hmm how the Bible views women, very inaccurate uh, viewpoint of women, and therefore a very inaccurate viewpoint of the soul. The equality of the sexes is something that's not well presented uh, in the Bible, and in fact is dis disagreed with in the Bible, and, uh, and therefore out of harmony with truth and out of harmony with God. And yeah, there are so many issues you could list where there's major flaws. What about issues flaws. of sexuality and homosexuality, would you say? Well, these are areas where there are some flaws and then there are also some truths. Um, so the Bible does contain areas where there are some flaws and some truths. In the issue of sexuality, obviously having moral behaviour between men and women, between partners, is, uh, and between men and men and women and women, is part of the truth. However, the whole concept that homosexuality is condemned by God is completely false. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my best friends in the spirit worlds are, are homosexual in nature in the sense that their soulmate is the same gender, was the same gender on earth as they were. And the Apostle John is one of those persons. So, you know, the whole concept of homosexuality is completely in error. And as people grow in love, they start to realise that it's completely in error. And a, a lot of people justify it through the natural use of a woman and natural use of a man and all these other justifications. but are all just uh, justifications written in a book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and as a person grows in love and grows towards God, they start realising these justifications have no basis in truth and they have no basis in love either. Mm -hmm. um, so the Bible is severely flawed in some areas of morality and in other areas of mor morality quite true. What about issues, historical issues or issues about your life? Um Again, it's sort of like the middle of the road there as well. There are some areas historically that are completely true uh, that it mentions that are fairly accurate and, and some of the memories of the people as they wrote things down were pretty accurate as well. There are other things that are completely false, you know, like there's things about my life in the first century that are completely false, you know. It, it portrays me as having a mother who never had sex before I was born. Not true. My mother told me she had sex before I was born and my mother and father uh, had sex and as a result I was conceived. You know, so there was no virgin birth, for example. Were they married when...? Uh... Yes, they were married. Yeah, um, yeah my father um, looked for a good wife, you know, and found one and, and they fell in love. My, my father and mother at the beginning of their relationship were very much in love. They're now very much in love too because they happen to also be soulmates. But there were a period of time during my life in the first century where they weren't very much in love at all. And, uh, and in fact, uh, they would admit that, you know, that they weren't very much in love at all. Um, and that was because of generally the treatment that they had for each other, and particularly my father with my mother at times, mm -hmm. which was the common way that men in the first century treated their women, mm -hmm. uh, which was also flawed. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many things about my life that we can mention. And, and perhaps one thing we need to do is just list the different things eventually as a question and answer series and say, no, yes, no, yes, you know, and, yeah. and just answer the questions directly as to what was true and what was not true. What about just speaking and in generalities um, about what is 
inaccurate uh, in the Bible. What about issues of heaven and hell and what happens when we die? Well, it, the, the Bible contains contradictions about heaven and hell and what happens when you die. For example, uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, there are scriptures in the Bible that say that when you die, you're dead and nothing, you're, you're, you're completely non-existent. Mm -hmm. um, this is an obvious error, but, but it's contained within the Bible. Most people are not, who even read their Bible are not aware that it even says it mm -hmm. in the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, for example. And uh, as a result of that, most people, you know, just ignore those passages because they've never read them. Mm. Um, then the Bible also states, in, particularly with my teachings, that are, some of which are recorded in the Bible relatively accurately, um, that, that there is an afterlife, you know, where people can talk to each other and see each other. And while many people then interpret that as a metaphor, uh, I um, also said quite clearly that it wasn't just a metaphor, that this was a possibility mm -hmm. in, in the spirit world that you could speak with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah, and other people, uh, you could speak with other people on earth. And I demonstrated that through my day-to-day -day life by talking to people who were spirit influenced. And I spoke to the spirits through the people. Yeah. So, you know, there are many truths that are contained there if you look at it. But unfortunately, most people have a very fixed concept when they look at those particular things. It's almost like they're told a heap of things about the Bible before they read it. And then they're told what they can believe from the Bible when they read it. And they're told how to interpret it when they read it. If you had not been told any of those things and you read the Bible from a completely open mind and a completely open heart, you would be shocked at what you would have accepted as real and what is not actually real mm -hmm. when you read the Bible. And I feel most people would be absolutely shocked and will be shocked in the future about what they actually accepted as real when logic and, and also love would dictate such a thing was not possible. Mm. 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 Okay, thank you.